All right, let's start out. We'll take about five thousandths of a cut, five thousandths deep cut. Put a little cutting oil inside. Cutting steel, so you want to make sure it's well lubricated. Cross slide in just enough to clear. Turn the carriage out and move the cross slide back to zero. Always go back to zero. And right, now move the compound in another 5,000. Take another cut. If you miss the line, you start, start a good distance out from the thread, so if you miss a line, you can stop it and, and try it again. Don't, don't, don't engage it right up here close to the thread, because if you screw up, you're going to take a chunk out of your part. So start out here a ways, give yourself some time. Coming up on 20,000. Huh? There we go. Make sure you come pull your tool far enough out that you don't drag it. This is a pretty coarse thread, so it's going to get pretty deep by the time we're done. So go as far as you can without hitting the back side of the bore. All right, 25 pounds. And here's some chatter. Hopefully that'll go away when we start taking smaller cuts. We'll take another spring cut right here without feeding any more in. Give the tool a chance to catch up. Still took some the metal off, and we'll do it again. Do a third spring cut just to make sure. I think barely cutting now. We're not getting any more chatter either. That's a good thing. All right. So by now, some of you are probably wondering, how do we know how far to? go in with the compound. Well, it's, it's the same as with the external thread. Um, remember from the last video I gave you that uh, formula for calculating that? Um, the pitch of the thread divided by one and a half. Well, this is the same thing. So let's just do that again. I forget what the number was offhand. My pseudo HP calculator out here. Um, okay, the pitch of the thread is there's 12 threads per inch, the pitch is 1 over 12, so the pitch is 83 thousandths. And if we take inch and a half, divided by inch and a half, that's 55, almost 56 thousandths. Okay, that is an estimate. We don't want to go that deep with the compound, we want to go maybe 50 thousandths and then check it. Check it against the uh, external thread that we made. Um, there's no, unlike an external thread where you can use thread wires to uh, measure the pitch diameter, we don't have that luxury with an internal thread. We don't have a tool to measure the pitch diameter. Um, what's commonly used is, is what's called a, a thread gauge. Um, it's a set of gauges, really, two of them, at least two. 
um, one go and one no go gauge. So you, you, you cut your thread until the go gauge goes in and the no go, ga no -go gauge won't. So you know it tells you that it, whether it, when it's big enough and when it's too big. So it's, but those are very expensive and uh, out of the reach of most uh, hobby machine shops. So let's, uh, let's continue cutting here. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see what's going on a little closer. Take another 5,000 saw, that brings us up to 30. Make sure we got oil going in there. Take another spring cut. Take a spring cut on N35. Get rid of that chatter. Alright, let's try 40. chattering like that, I'm just going to take a spring cut on every pass. The farther you get in, the more, the larger the cut is, the more more chance you have of chattering. See, that time it didn't chatter. Um, speaking of chatter, it's a common issue on the, on the Atlas because they're so lightweight. Um, other ways of reducing chatter is well, one. The one way I said was reduce the amount of boring bar overhang, and when you're boring, um, also reduce the amount of tool overhang in the bar. Make sure it's in the bar as far as possible. Um, make sure your gibs are tight on both the the compound and the cross slide. Let me zoom out here. Okay, make sure your gibs are tight. These screws on the side here on the cross slide and on the compound. Um, especially for threading, it doesn't hurt to snug them both up on threading. I mean, yeah, it's a little inconvenient at first because you, you know it's a little harder to, to move the dials, but it'll uh, greatly reduce the, the tendency to, to chatter. All right, we're getting pretty close now. We're at uh, 40, so I'm going to cut back my uh, depth of cuts by a little bit to. Uh, 3,000 instead of 5. Still taking a, a spring cut after each pass. And we'll just kind of sneak up on our final dimension, our final diameter. Let's take a stop and check it here. See where we're at. See if we can start this thing yet. Yep, we're just barely starting it. It's pretty tight. So since we since we can start it. Oh, I wasn't at forty thousand. I was I was at fifty thousand. So. Yeah, no wonder we're getting close. All right, so now the uh, the external thread that we cut starts. It's too tight; it won't go all the way through yet. 
So now I think now we're going to abandon the, the compound and we're going to start feeding the tool out until the until the part fits. So we'll, we'll go a thousandth of an inch at a time. So here's a thousandth. Leave the compound set where it is. Forget about it. We're done with it. Now this should clean up the thread nice. Let's make sure there's uh, plenty of oil in it. both sides of the tool. We just, we just turned that tool into a form cutter. We're copying the shape of the tool into the thread form. Okay, so that's a thousand. Let's stop and Check the fit. It won't take much. It's still pretty snug. Okay. It's a pretty much a zero clearance thread there. Take, uh, let's take another thousandth off. Pretty darn good. Still got some chips in it. Wouldn't hurt to go into it with a uh, Scotch Brite pad. Clean any burrs out of it, but. There we go. Alright, well, that's about it. We got a, we got a nut that was made on the, uh, the Atlas. We got an external thread that was made on the hard engine. They both fit together fine. Except for those chips at the end. They'll fit together fine when I get it cleaned up. So that's about it. That's how to cut a, uh, an internal thread on the Atlas lathe. See you next time.